Hello, good afternoon and welcome to New Frost Morse. It's Saturday afternoon, Mandy and I are together. Thank you Mandy for joining us. We've got a, a lovely video to do today. It's all about the puzzle gene that we're going to be talking about and introducing that to you lately. And uh, I've done all the cleaning today. <laughs> Spent me three hours going through everything and there's some things I want to show you Mandy. Come and have a look and see. We've got a couple of locks that I'll show you and which are exciting. Um, the first lock is um, Pringle, and you can see inside there without me even opening, man. You can put it through there. See the two tails together? Can you see that? That's the banana pastel orange dream that shed out yesterday that we put to Pringle, and they've got their tails together locking. I'll slowly open it up and show you what I mean. You can see what's going on here. Hopefully, I don't disturb you too much, but can you see how beautiful that is? Is that a lovely lock? It's lovely, isn't it? And you can get the head of the boy in as well. We'll see how nice he is. So we won't disturb him. So I've recorded that as a lock. And the Calico girl is building, which means that that lock could be a very important lock, Mandy, because if that's her final build, this mating would be really good because fresh sperm would be going into her. So we've got the prospect of producing a pastel banana orange dream calicos which are going to be gorgeous because she's an F and F line and they're both high quality high intensity lines we could produce something very special there so fingers crossed let's hope that works out well we've also got um, another one here which I wanted to show you Cleo our banana girl who's a spider banana she's very close to ovulating I think and Jad and I made a decision to put in the big clown boy because the pastel clown boy had done three or four locks but we're not convinced that he's fully sexually mature so we thought we'd just take a gamble by bringing in the big clown boy so we end up with some heck clowns banana heck clowns that will be spider as well do you want to have a look at their lock and mm -hmm. see if they're still locked they were locked when i was cleaning today but they might still be locked so i'll just have a little peek see if they are still locked and look how big she is. they're both big but look how big the girl is so I don't know whether they're still locked, Mandy. Let's have a little look and see whether they are. Yes, they are. Can you see the locking? The very back? Mm -hmm. So the tails are locked. And we won't disturb her because I think we'll just let them go back, get back to it. They've been locked for at least four hours. So I'm hoping that he will just put his high-end genes into her and produce some quality, quality animals. So that was the two really good things. We've had some perfect sheds. There's lots going on here at the moment. I've cleaned all the babies. I'm delighted with how things are going. Everything's in balance. And now that's beautiful, because now we can um, talk about the puzzle gene. But I've got a lovely quote for the day first, Mandy, which I'm gonna share. Um, following on from yesterday's video, um, we were talking about the beautiful um, song we did with the violin and the top violinist there sent me a personal message and said he was so pleased that his video was uh, helpful to some of our subscribers who are struggling with major issues right now loss of family loss of their collection um, particularly those in Texas and Angel's family particularly and then Angel sent me a beautiful message of he said he uh, hadn't cried for a long time and the film moved him to tears which kind of I want to come back to that point about the healing properties of crying it's actually a good thing to cry because you doctors say it's very good for you as well, but um, spiritually it's good to, to just let out your emotions. And I think Angel was saying that he feels that his healing process has just begun because it is a healing process when you have such a loss. And sometimes it takes music or it takes a spiritual thought to help us find that healing process. And I've got a couple of thoughts to build on that which will help those that feel broken inside. I know Mandy, you've um, had experiences with family members that felt broken and and uh, you're aware of some of these quotes too, aren't you? They're quite uplifting and edifying to know that uh, these quotes are very good. Um, I do like them. So here's one here first. It says, sometimes we must break completely in order to rebuild fully. Trust your ability to transform. And I quite like that because in my life I've been <laughs> Um, through a lot of challenges where I feel cut down by others, I feel undermined, um, not respected, used and abused in my life and each time it's a very painful experience, particularly when it comes from those that are close to you, it's even more painful and um, 
Over the years, I guess I've become more resilient and bouncing back. And we used to have this song we used to sing called Bounce Back on our mission. <laughs> it was an American song and it used to be a motivating song when missionaries were getting down because of the rejections they were facing. And then we used to go in our flats and listen to this music and it said, bounce back, bounce back. It was really a high positive energy um, music that kind of encouraged us to bounce back when we had a setback. So I know my brother Stan always takes the mickey out of me and he keeps on singing bounce back when we get together. <laughs> he gives me a back rub and he says, come on Paul, bounce back. <laughs> so I find it quite funny, but um, these things are good. Um, there's some other nice quotes here I can share with you as well. And this one is, um, uh, I think it's by Bruce Lee actually, which um, talk about the rebuild, rebuilding process. I quite like this because you know, we can spend a lot of time thinking about change, but until we actually do something about it, we're just going to get nothing, nothing will get done. So we get these feelings to change. But he said, if you spend too much time thinking about a thing, you'll never get it done. So when we get these really strong promptings to do something, whether it's to buy a snake, and well done, Ed, he's been planning his purchases for the last three months, and he's now got to the point where I think he's just bought six or seven snakes in the last two days. And I get these lovely pictures from Ed um, of what he's buying, and I'm so excited for him. But this is a man of action that actually responds, he plans, prepares, and then he executes. And that's a really important part of running a business all your life. We can spend a lot of time thinking about what we're going to do, but we've got to actually get down and do it and um, make that first step. And as long as you make that first step, you haven't got to do everything. Just make the first step and you'll find... The journey of life is one step at a time, isn't it? And when we're rebuilding our lives, having taken a devastating blow, if we shed a tear or two, or if we contemplate what's happened to us and we start thinking about how we can make things better, that's the first process of healing, I believe, in the step. And then drawing upon family and friends, drawing upon God, drawing upon all the resources that will help us rebuild. Because it's not a solo effort, it's a joint effort. Which leads me nicely onto a short film I'm going to share. And this is a story um, told by one of our prophets in the church when he was a young man. He was a gardener and he was given a stewardship. He bought a property and there was a um, currant bush in the farm that had grown really big and not been tended for. And it just provided great shade and it was a great big tree, but it had no fruit at all. And he decided to cut it down. And I think I'll let him tell you the story in his own words because there's a beautiful principle that's being taught here. And uh, let's just do that now and then we can enjoy that. to speak of one particular attitude and practice we need to adopt if we're to meet our Heavenly Father's high expectations. It is this, willingly to accept and even seek corrections. Elder Hugh B. Brown told of purchasing a rundown farm in Canada many years ago. As he went about cleaning up and repairing his property, he came across a current bush that had grown over six feet high and was yielding no berries. So he pruned it back drastically, leaving only small stumps. Then he saw a drop like a tear on the top of each of these little stumps, as if the current bush were crying and thought he heard it say, how could you do this to me? I was making such wonderful growth and now you've cut me down. Every plant in the garden will look down on me. How could you do this to me? I thought you were the gardener here. Look, little currant bush, I am the gardener here, and I know what I want you to be. I don't intend you to be a fruit tree or a shade tree. I want you to be a currant bush. And someday, little currant bush, when you're laden with fruit, you're going to say, thank you, Mr. Gardener, for loving me enough to cut me down. Years later, another Brown was in line to be promoted to general. But even though he was fully qualified for the promotion, it was denied him because he was a Mormon. Continuing his story, Elder Brown remembered, I got on the train and started back with a broken heart, with bitterness in my soul. When I got to my tent, I threw my cap on the cot. I clenched my fists and I shook them at heaven. I said, how could you do this to me, God? I've done everything 
everything I could to measure up. How could you do this to me? And then I heard a voice. It was my own voice. And the voice said, I am the gardener here. I know what I want you to do. The bitterness went out of my soul and I fell on my knees by the cot to ask forgiveness for my ungratefulness. And now, almost 50 years later, I look up to God and say, thank you, Mr. Gardener, for cutting me down, for loving me enough to hurt me. All of us can meet God's high expectations, however great or small our capacity and talent may be. Let us pray for his love-inspired correction. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I find that a really beautiful story, Mandy, because <laughs> there's so much relevance to us in that story, isn't there? When life mm -hmm. throws us some curveballs and we think we're going a particular way and suddenly tragedy can hit us or a change of circumstances, or in this particular case, um, not being promoted to being a general and he was everything was fine except that uh, the person making the choice didn't agree with his faith and decided not to promote him and he was really feeling quite angry about that because that's prejudicial um, whether you if you're up for the job and it's there for you and you know your faith actually is the very thing that people judge you for then I, f I find that really difficult to stomach myself because I think that uh, you know, whether you're black, white, whatever race you're from, whatever culture you're from, if you're up for the job and you qualify, you should be given that opportunity if it's, it's there. But it's interesting what he did there. He actually had that initial feeling of anger. And I think that's what happens when tragedy hits us. We, we get angry often where we think, why me? Why is this happening to me? And it takes several years sometimes to realize that out of the seed of adversity can come forth something that is beautiful and we can bear more fruit. So that opposition is really there, to designed for us to maybe knock off a few of our edges, humble us a little bit. He went on his knees and prayed forgiveness for being ungrateful. In his mind, he thought that his role was to be a general in the US Army. In fact, he turned out to be a prophet of God. His holy calling was to become a prophet. So one door shuts, and another opportunity can happen. So in his mind, because his career path wasn't going the way it was, the Lord wanted him to do something else. And he bore so much fruit. And he was a great blessing. He's no longer here as a prophet, but his teachings are still here. As you can see, he teaches beautifully. And I hope you feel the spirit of the message there. And it's not to judge anyone. It's there to invite you to come unto Christ and to find strength in him. So I think that's the spiritual thought for the day, is when these things happen to us, remember... We can bear more fruit if we take the right attitude towards it. And eventually we can grow strong and become what our Heavenly Father really wants us to become. And uh, that's a really nice message. So let's have a look now. We're going to move over to the puzzle gene. And uh, I really like the puzzle gene. It was founded in 2011 by a guy called, actually it's a company called Exotics by Nature. And this is a recessive gene. So it's quite a new gene, it's only about 10 years old and there's quite a few people that are starting to see the value of puzzle and in the US you'll find that the puzzle gene is much more available in the Europe. It's, if you get a puzzle you're very lucky to get a puzzle on Morph Market and I'll show you this because if we turn to the um, Morph Market to see what's going on. Actually we'll go to the first one I was going to show you is if we go to the actual gene itself. So this is the world of um, ball pythons here. So this is what a puzzle looks like, Mandy. Can you see that? Can you home in on that for me? So the reason it's called puzzle is because it's got puzzle shapes that join together like a puzzle. That's the reason it's called a puzzle. But it's also got some really interesting things going on here because can you see all these lateral lines that are flowing and joining together amongst the puzzle? And you can see the head stamp on there is gorgeous. It looks like a, a normal, but it's um, it's got an unusual pattern, even though it's got the colour of a normal. And as they were experimenting, you can see Exotics by Nature was the um, the company that actually found this. And they decided to combine it with some, some other genes. And one of the most nicest um, 
genes and as you combine them these very subtle genetics have an influence on other patterns so they combine it with a pastel and the pastel puzzle looks gorgeous and what I'll do is I'll take you through a few combos and you can have a little look with me um, I think the first thing we we'll do is probably best to go to the American market if we can and I'll just see if I can find what's available out there on the American market so here we have let's just see how many pages you've got so in America you've got effectively amongst the puzzles you've got two pages and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we say there's about 24, um, let's have a look at the total number on there. So you've got 24 ball pythons in America available. Now, when there's over 30,000 ball pythons on Morph Market, and you've only got 24 puzzles, and you've got probably four or five in Europe, that represents less than 1% of all the animals for sale. I think it's 0.01% of all the animals for sale are puzzled. That's how rare they are. Because I think people, once they get them, they hold on to them because they're so beautiful. And uh, let's have a look and see what uh, I think. And Mandy, if you see anything you like, then obviously let's know what you like. But the bamboozle, 4,000 euro, uh, dollars. Let's have a look at that. So that's a combination of the bamboo with the puzzle. Now we've got some beautiful bamboos and you can see what it does it takes the bamboo and then you can see the jigsaw puzzle shapes in there quite clearly so that's that's, that's a nice combination and that's called the bamboozle <laughs> let's have a look and see what else we've got here so we've got the spider phantom puzzle let's see what we get when we combine spider with phantom and puzzle so there you go pretty snake and that's by rural authority and that comes in at a price of two and a half thousand US dollars. The super butter, because these are recessive genes, you need both a puzzle in the female and in the male, at least a het puzzle in both. Obviously, if you have two visuals, then everything will be puzzle. Here we have a super butter. Let's have a look at that one. So that one's a super butter. It has got puzzle in it, but you won't see it because a super butter is an all-white snake. <laughs> but it's a bell, so you you know you can buy the bells with hidden genes in there. You have to rely on the breeder there to make sure that there is puzzle in there. It would be very difficult to see it. And that one's coming in at fifteen hundred euros. Um, then you've got a straightforward puzzle, hundred percent het for hypo there. There you go, it's a nice example of a puzzle. Let's have a look at it. There's all the puzzle shapes. See how they kind of join together. There we go. Um, what else have we got here? Now this is the pastel puzzle I was going to show you. I think when you put pastel with puzzle, everything just looks gorgeous. And there we go. That's the impact of a pastel and a puzzle. This beautiful markings combine nicely with the pastel. I do like that Mandy's and it's a pretty looking snake isn't it? Mm. It's amazing how two genes can look so beautiful together. That's 3,000 US dollars so once you put pastel with the puzzle I mean there's some serious money there. You know, It's only one codon and one recessive going together and it's 3,000 US dollars for that. So I find amazing. So I think it's a gene that has a lot of traction in it because there's not many out there. And it's what it does to the other gym combos. Let's have a look and see what it does. This is called a Sterling puzzle. And with the Sterling, you've got a cinnamon and super pastel mixed in with a puzzle. Now we've got a, uh, a pewter. Now if we put puzzle in with our pewter, and this has got an extra pa uh, pastel color to it. I think it's pretty. Look what it does to the patterns, Mandy. Mm. See how wavy those patterns are and jagged, jagged they are. Really pretty, and that one's coming in at um, two and a half thousand US dollars. And the other one I, I like the look of. Sorry, like the sterling. The one before that. Like the sterling, the, the one, one above. Bef the one yeah. above. Should we have a look at the one before that? It looks even prettier, doesn't it? What I should do is click on there to get a high resolution picture before I blow it up. There you go. Isn't that pretty? It's gorgeous. So I've got a stern, I've got I've got a pewter that's gorgeous. But what the um, puzzle does, it join it will join up all the patterns. See how joined up they are. Mm. Very very pretty pretty snake that.
very pretty. Price on that one's coming in at um, 2750 US dollars. And I, out of the two, Mandy, I'd agree with you, that one looks prettier to me. Mm. Well, there's quite a few down here as well. Look, there's another one down here, Super Pastel Red Exantic. Um, you've got a Pastel Yellow Belly puzzle. Let's have a look at the Pastel Yellow Belly. See how the Yellow Belly, that's sold. Let's see how that looks when you put Yellow Belly to the Pastel. Pretty, look at the head stamp. Isn't that lovely? See the puzzle markings and the yellow belly? The flaming coming up from the yellow belly. Another very pretty snake. And you start introducing clown into that, Mandy, you can have something very special, I think. Mm. I'll see if they've got any clown puzzles, because I'd like to see a clown puzzle. Um, Super Pastel Orange Dream, I think this one is. Or is it an orange ghost? No, it's an orange ghost. And this is Het Red Exantic as well. So you've got two genetics in there. Puzzle plus the recessive genetics are Orange Ghost and Puzzle, Super Pastel and Het Red Exantic. Het Red Exantic is a bit confusing because when you have a Het, you think it's a recessive, but in this case, a Het Red Exantic is actually a codon. <laughs> um, pretty. So the Het Red Exantic, you can see the red coming in there, but you still get those lovely puzzly patterns going through that beautiful snake. And again, that one comes in at um, seven and a half thousand US dollars for that, if you want that, because you're getting two recessives. And the orange ghost is beautiful, isn't it? Doesn't it make a nice ghost look to it? Mm. Really nice looking snake. Okay, let's have a look. We've got one here from Justin Kubelka. Let's see, his is 1900 US dollars. Let's see what he's offering us. Now this is his spider puzzle, which I think looks stunning. Look how shiny that spider is. And look at the puzzle, how it inter interacts with the spider web. It kind of mixes it up a bit more. We still get some spider webbing, but it's, it's a nice impact, isn't it? I really like the look at that. So that's 1900 US dollars. Um, now moving up, let's see what the banana does and the pinstripe does to the puzzle. So there you have the banana pinstripe puzzle. What do you think, man? So, pinstripe's still in there, and the banana's always lovely, but it does mm. mix up, actually, it gives extra pattern to the pinstripe, because sometimes the pinstripe doesn't have as much pattern, but that gives you a bit more pattern, doesn't it? Mm. Okay, so that one's coming in at 3,000 US dollars. And let's see, we've got, uh, there's another spider puzzle. I think spider and puzzle does look good together. Let's see what page two offers us. Now here you've got a very pretty little puzzle, which is a male 66% hip or something. Let's have a look and see what it is. So this is a 66% hip ultra male. So I look at that and I think to myself, the puzzle and the ultra male, the hip ultra male shouldn't be a visual, but I look at that and I can see ultra male in it. Because I keep a lot of ultra males myself, Mandy. So when you compare puzzle without the het. Look at the difference. So just a puzzle, and then you put het ultramel. The ultramel, which is only, it isn't got a fully recessive gene in there, but look how powerful the ultramel comes through. Even with a single het, it looks to me like a puzzle ultramel. <laughs> I'd love to see what a puzzle ultramel actually looks like, but isn't that amazing how you can see the het coming through? Very, very powerful. And then that one's coming in at um, 4950, nearly 5,000 US dollars. I would say that Ultramel's in there, even though he says that's 66% hair. It's not even 100% hair. I would say if I was to buy that, there's a good chance that Ultramel's in there looking at that in my book. Let's have a look and see what else we've got. So you've got here a straightforward puzzle. There you go. Now that's a good example of what a puzzle looks like, Mandy. Mandy and I both like jigsaw puzzles, don't we? And when we look at those jigsaw puzzles, they're jigsaw puzzle shaped, aren't they? Can you see them? There we go. Alright, almost there now. We're going to wrap up the film very shortly. And there's another yes. So there you go. There's, there's less than um, 20, there's 24 snakes on the US market, Mandy. Now, if I was in America, I'd have a lot better choice. If, now in Europe, now look what we've got in Europe, which 
is nowhere near as good as what you guys have got. We are struggling. There's no visual puzzles on Morph Market in Europe. Any, if we want to get into the project, we've got to buy into the heads, and then we've got to prove them out. So let's see what's available to the European market. Um, I'll see if I can find the European market for us. So here we have... Uh, the first one is a classic 100% double het. So you've got a normal looking snake with puzzle in there, 400 pounds. Classic 100% het puzzle, 350. Pastel 100% double het, 500. So they're all hets. There's a fire pastel here, which is 150 euros. That's a good price. Let's have a look at that and see if that's... That one would be very tempting, Mandy. I like the look of that. That's 100% head puzzle. That is a fantastic deal. I might even put an offer on that myself. So, um, if we look at the um, price, 150 euros for that gene, it's very tempting. Is that a boy or a girl? That's a boy. Well, that's a very tempting man. Oh, I must admit, I'm tempted by that. So, I'll discuss that one with Jared and see whether or not we can put an offer on something like that. Very good. To get into a project for 150 Mandy is a bargain. That's an absolute bargain. The ghost 100% head puzzle. You've got a double puzzle ghost here. Double head puzzle ghost. What are you going to get for your double heads there? You've got ghost and puzzle double head there. And that comes in at 350 from the same breeder. So that's. I think he's very generous with his pricing to us here. So double head for 350 euros is very good, Mandy. And then you've got an Orange Dream Pastel. Let's have a look at this one here. Pastel Orange Dream Double Head Puzzle Ghost. That one's coming in at a thousand euros for that. Another beautiful animal. So I think... Let's see that. Sorry, that's, that's probably about all we can show here. I mean, the rest of them are pretty much for sale. So I hope you've enjoyed that little mini tour of the puzzle gene. Mm -hmm. Um, it gives you an idea that there are a few out there, but if you get an opportunity, then obviously take them if you want to get into it. And um, this, tonight, when I come back after a couple of hours fishing, Mandy's made me a beautiful lunch, which I'm going to eat now. And um, you're going to have some music. It's going to be an entertaining evening tonight. I'm going to do some dancing, some singing. It's not going to be snake related. It's all going to be a bit of fun, really. Um, but just to give everyone a bit of a Saturday night, um, a bit of fun. And uh, some of the music that I'll be sharing with you, just to let you know, is we're going to have a bit of James Brown. It should be fun. Because I'm feeling good. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> and we might have a bit of Jesse J. We might also have um, a little bit of Gladys Knight and the Pips, which my dad loves. So there'll be a bit of there. And we've got Marvin Gale. He's going to come out for us. And you might even see uh, Rocky turn up singing a song as well. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for your love and support. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll see you later tonight. Bye-bye for now.